It is a jobs creation program. On top of that, investors have never made up more than just a small fraction of the total number of immigrants who come to the country. Indeed, of the approximately 1 million immigrants who come to America each year, only 10,000 are investors. In fact, often wealthy investors are not attracted to immigrate to America for themselves per se. They are more attracted to immigrate for the sake of their family, especially their children. For them, North America offers better education opportunities, good health care, strong economic prospects, a clean environment, and access to large markets. For us, they bring jobs and investment. Most importantly, the program pays for itself. Possible modernization of the investor program offers a tremendous opportunity to match significant investment from investors to projects serving a defined public interest. One example of this strategy would be to use foreign investor funds to address the overstretched U.S. infrastructure funding gap of more than $2 trillion, excuse me, needed by 2025. The EB-5 program could help solve the problem at no cost to the taxpayer. Recently, U.S. Senators Chuck Grassley and Patrick Leahy introduced a bipartisan EB-5 Reform and Integrity Act of 2020 excuse me, to improve and promote the EB-5 program. Over many years, the two senators have tirelessly worked together to strengthen the integrity of the EB-5 investor immigration program. The act was just the newest iteration of their efforts. There were several key benefits the bill offered. One, a five-year reauthorization of the program, converting it from a temporary sunsetting program that continually needs to be reauthorized into a more permanent, permanent, permanent program. Two, reasonable reform measures enabling the industry to operate with reasonable oversight. Very reasonable. These include third-party audits requiring clear information to be provided to investors about the progress of projects, requiring more definitive records illustrating an investor's source of funds, and scrutiny for and protections against threats to national security. Three, good faith, regional center, and new commercial enterprise protections. Four, innocent investor protections for debarred projects including age-out protection for children, priority date retention and use of recovered funds for another investment. Uh, that's getting kind of technical there. I don't know what that means. Five, no retroactive application to investor petitions. Six, regional center oversight under a season reasonableness standard. Uh, we're being reasonable again. And seven, no strict liability of regional centers for third-party acts. Hmm. Okay, I'm, uh, the rest of that is kind of confusing. I'm not sure what's going on here. Um, um, I'll just read the rest that I can understand. At the same time, a bipartisan group of lawmakers from the U.S. House of Representatives expressed their support for the EB-5 Regional Center Program in a letter sent to the chairwoman and ranking member of the House Committee on Appropriations. In their letter, the lawmakers pointed out that, with the necessary reforms and a long-term reauthorization, it is possible to see more than $9 billion in investment and as many as 300,000 jobs saved or created each year after enactment. The letter was signed by 10 lawmakers, including U.S. Representatives Tom O'Halloran, Brian Fitzpatrick, and Dwight Evans, who led the initiative. It concluded, we request that you include the EB-5 Regional Center Program's reform and long-term reauthorization in the next appropriation measure. Neither the Grassley-Leahy bill, Leahy bill sorry, nor the Congressional Initiative were successful in changing the terms of the program, although the EB-5 program was extended again until June 30, 2021. In coming to its defense before it was extended, Bob Kraft, President of IIUSA, a national not-for-profit EB-5 association, pointed out that mayors from around the country, including the U.S. Conference of Mayors, trade associations, chambers of commerce, travel organizations, healthcare organizations, and many others, stand with IIUSA to support this reauthorization. In short, there is a lot of support for the EB-5 program and its reform. 
This is not the first congressional rebuff that Grassley and Leahy, or for that matter the EB-5 investor community, have been through. For years, efforts to modernize the EB-5 program have been met with defeat. There is widespread agreement around the integrity measures the senators are proposing. Unfortunately, Congress is just too tied up to find the time to address the need. But now that the need is at its greatest, maybe under the new administration, hope, hope, the EB-5 program can become the light needed to fend off this COVID-19 economic darkness, at least when it comes to immigration. Let's hope so. Okay, that's interesting. I don't know much about this program, and I can't really comment on it very much. I mean, the way they write this clearly makes it sound like a good idea. Um, I would be interested in knowing why it is, runs into so many problems in Congress. It sounds like the kind of thing that uh, a lot of people could get behind, but maybe there's something tricky about it that, um, or a downside that I'm not seeing. So I may look into that some more and do some research. All right, next up. Article entitled, South Asian Women Immigrants, Some on COVID Frontlines, Left Unable to Work by Trump Admin. When Shilpa Shaddev lost her job as human resources associate at a grant-making foundation last month, she joined the ranks of the tens of millions of workers across the country who have become unemployed during the COVID-19 pandemic. But for Shadyev, the pandemic didn't cause her unemployment. U.S. Citizenship and Immigration Services, or USCIS, did. The federal agency failed to renew her work authorization linked to her H-4 visa status as the spouse of an H-1B visa holder before her previous work authorization had reached its three-year limit and expired in November. As a result, Shadjev remains unable to work until the agency renews her work permit, a process its website claims could take up to 17 months. Wow. Now Shadjev worries that she may not be able to return to the job she loves, and since her 18-month-old son's daycare is closed in the pandemic, she takes care of him full-time, leaving her without the free time to look for other potential jobs. I don't know if my job will be there. The company is not going to wait indefinitely for me, said Shadjev, who emigrated from India to California in 2013. We live in Silicon Valley. It needs to be a two-income household. Chajev is one of what immigration attorneys estimate to be thousands of immigrants across the country, most of whom are women from India, and some of whom were working on the front lines of the pandemic, who are now unable to work because of increasingly long delays by USCIS under the Trump administration in the processing of their visa-based work authorizations, known as 4-H-4EADS. The work permits are normally issued to spouses of skilled workers of H-1B visas after their employers have begun the process of sponsoring their families' green cards. Experts say that while the Trump administration has met resistance in its attempts to overhaul the H-1B program as part of its broader efforts to curb immigration, targeting the spouses of H-1B workers on the h 4 EAD program by repeatedly threatening to revoke it and by slowing the process of the work permits has proven easier. Uh, it's very familiar, isn't it? The H-4EAD program was low-hanging fruit in terms of immigration policy, especially considering that Trump had run on much broader sweeping immigration restrictions, said Amy Bott, the author of High Tech Housewives, Indian IT Workers, Gendered Labor and Transmigration, a book about the experiences of Indian women in the U.S. on H-4 visas. While the administration's days are numbered, advocates for the work authorizations are calling on the incoming Biden administration to direct USCIS to end the processing lapses that led to job losses in order to provide stability to the mostly Indian women across the country whose careers are currently dictated by the federal government. A group of 60 House representatives on Wednesday sent President-elect Joe Biden a letter written by Representative Bonnie Watson Coleman of New Jersey, requesting that his administration extend the validity period of all expired H-4 EADs on his first day in office next month 
in order to allow time to rectify the systemic processing issues that have been created by the Trump administration and provide immediate relief to affected families. More than 100 of Watson Coleman's constituents contacted her office in the past year about H4EAD lapses, staffers said, noting that the outreach was a 900% increase over the amount of constituents who voiced their concerns about the same issue the previous year. New York City is a top hub for H-1B visa holders, as are San Francisco, Houston, and Atlanta. 93% of the more than 90,000 people who were granted first-time H-4 EADs from 2015 to 2018 were women, most of whom came to the U.S. from India, according to data from USCIS. Overall, 93% of current H-4 EAD holders are South Asian women, according to the South Asian American Leading Together. I'm sorry, I, I'm laughing because it's hard to keep saying H-4 EAD. It looks like head, H for Ed. H for Eid? I, there's no way to like say it <laughs> other than just read it out, but it just it's um it's written a lot in this article. <laughs> it's all over the place. I, yeah. Anyway. <clears throat> in case you wonder I'm not laughing at these women being locked out of their jobs. I think that's terrible. Okay. On average, H4 EAD holders, surveyed for a report published last year by the South Asian American Policy and Research Institute, faced a four-year employment gap in the U.S., not including the length of time it would take to obtain a job after receiving the H4 EAD, and assuming the H4 visa holder did not obtain an employment visa during that time. Some of the H-4 EAD holders affected by recent delays were working on the front lines of the pandemic as healthcare workers and researchers before they were forced to abandon their jobs when their work authorizations expired before they received renewals, staffers for Watson Coleman said. Careers in science and healthcare were the fifth most popular roles filled by South Asian H-4 EAD holders who were surveyed for the SAAPRI report. 8% of those surveyed worked in science and healthcare, behind 36% who worked in technology, 11% in business and human resources, 10% in banking and finance, and 9% in fields not covered by the survey. Smaller amounts reported working in engineering, education, and communications. The Biden transition team did not respond to a request for comment. If history is any indication, Vice President-elect Kamala Harris might be sympathetic to the plights of Indian women in the U.S. on H-4 visas, and not just because of her own Indian heritage. In September 2018, as Senator from California, Harris co-authored with Senator Kirsten Gillibrand of New York a letter to then-Secretary of Homeland Security Kirsten Nielsen and then-Director of USCIS Lee Cisna urging them not to revoke the H-4 EADs a month after a court filing revealed senior DHS leadership were actively considering doing so. I'm, I'll save my asides for later. I'm just, <clears throat> it boggles my mind the, the things that this administration has been doing to try to discourage immigrants, even useful, even well, they're all useful, but I mean, even as seen by useful, as seen by our society as useful immigrants, as seen by our society as uh, really important immigrants, even they were being discouraged and were, they were trying to lock them out. It's just mind boggling. Anyway, back to the story. <clears throat> Three days before President Trump took office in January 2017, the Department of Homeland Security eliminated a regulation that required USCIS to process for H-4 EADs within 90 days. Since then, USCIS data shows that processing times for H-4 visa applicants, applications and work authorizations have increased to what immigration attorneys characterize as unprecedented wait times. Uh, the attorneys spoke to NBC News in a dozen in a dozen of interviews conducted over the past week with advocates of and experts on the work authorizations. Sorry, my voice is starting to go here. <clears throat> Excuse me. 
One reason the delays are so egregious, advocates and experts claim, is because H-4 holders cannot file to renew their work authorizations more than six months before they expire, leaving employed applicants with no way to ensure they will be able to secure renewed work authorizations and keep their jobs, given that wait times regularly stretch beyond six months. In response to a, re a request for comment about immigration attorneys' claims that processing times for H-4 visas and work authorizations have doubled and tripled on average under the Trump administration, sometimes allegedly taking close to a year, a USCIS spokesperson pointed a reporter for NBC News to the average historical processing times on the agency website. That data shows that processing times have indeed increased by about an extra two months for each of the two forms required to secure an H-4 EAD, one to extend or change non-immigration status and the other to apply for employment and authorization. Applicants routinely file both together with the work authorization approval normally following the visa approval, meaning that based on the average times listed, an applicant who applied for an H-4 EAD this past year could wait an average of nearly 10 months to receive a work authorization. In response to inquiries about how many H-4 EADs are currently pending and the agency's protocol for processing the work permit, a spokesperson for USCIS said that representatives do not comment on issues pending litig litigation. The agency is facing various lawsuits in federal district courts across the country over the processing delays of H-4 EADs. And in response to an inquiry about how the pandemic has affected the agency's processing of H-4 EADs, the spokesperson said the agency has maintained the ability to process the work authorizations despite the pandemic. After a lawsuit this summer, the agency was required by a court order to issue more than 45,565 employment authorization cards which go to several categories of immigrants, not just H-4 visa holders, after USCIS failed to distribute the cards even after the applications had been approved. Agency representatives attributed the incident to a lapse in production caused by both the end of a contract with a printer and a hiring freeze within USCIS, the Washington Post reported. Is unknown. It is unknown how many of the missing cards affected H-4 EAD applicants specifically, according to Robert Cohen, the attorney who represented the four plaintiffs in the case on behalf of the 75,000 people who were affected by the delays. One of the plaintiffs was suing for her H-4 EAD. The increase in processing delays under the Trump administration has left an untold number of mostly immigrant Indian women without work and now grappling with additional stress anxiety and boredom prompted by being unemployed during the pandemic. Some days I just don't get up from the bed, said one, who is awaiting her H-4 EAD renewal and spoke on the condition of anonymity out of fear of retribution from USCIS. If I had a job, I would have been positively engaged in the day and would have, have some amount of ownership and achievement, which currently sometimes there isn't. The pandemic amplified this whole situation. Since the Department of Homeland Security introduced the 2015 rule change allowing H-4 holders to apply for work authorizations once their spouse's employers had filed to apply for green cards, the Trump administration has repeatedly threatened to eliminate the spousal work authorization option entirely following the introduction of a 2017 executive order by Trump that sought to tighten regulations on foreign workers to promote the hiring of American workers. Indian and Chinese men in that order make up the majority of H-1B holders, up to 85,000 of whom can enter the country per year to pursue careers in fields including science, engineering, and information technology, teaching, and accounting. But because of a 1965 rule that no country could receive more than 7% of green cards in a year, Green card backlogs disproportionately affect Indian families who are in the country on H-1B visas, experts said. And since spouses of H-1B visa holders cannot apply for work authorizations until they have cleared certain hurdles in the green card application process, 
The backlog therefore directly affects the period of time it takes for the mostly Indian women on H-4 visas to get their work authorizations. On average, applicants from India on H-4 and H-1B visas wait 10 years to get a green card, according to the SAAPRI report, which also notes that 28% of H-4 EAD holders surveyed mentioned that green card backlog as among the biggest problems facing H-1B H-4 families today. Beyond the green card backlog, attorneys and advocates point to a pair of specific recent changes in USCIS processing procedures affecting H-4 EAD applications. The introduction of a biometric or fingerprinting requirement for H-4 applicants in March 2019, and the em elimination of premium processing of H-4 visa and work authorization applications. Both changes were also specified in a lawsuit filed in a Texas federal district court in October in which 230 plaintiffs alleged the agency acted in bad faith against the H-4 spouses of H-1B visa holders by implementing the changes. In response to inquiries about the reasons for the introductions of the biometrics requirement and the elimination of premium processing as both relate to H-4 EADs, a spokesperson for USCIS said the representatives do not comment on issues pending litigation. There we have that again. In the early months of the pandemic, USCIS offices were closed for in-person services from March to July, making it impossible for H-4 EAD applicants to attend biometric appointments, further delaying the application processing. In April, Guidance posted on the agency's website noted that in-person appointments at its application support centers would be automatically rescheduled for when the agency reopened and that applicants would be informed of their new appointment dates by mail. Under the Trump administration, USCIS also eliminated its practice of processing H-4 visa holders' applications with their family members' expedited H-1B applications within 15 days, according to Robert Cohen, the attorney who represented the plaintiffs in the summer lawsuit on the missing employment cards and a partner at Porter Wright Morris and Arthur LLP in Columbus, Ohio, and Nisha Karamni, an attorney and partner at Antonini and Cohen Immigration Law Group in Atlanta. Agency representatives informed H-4 visa applicants who inquired that they were no longer extending the courtesy of a concurrent premium processing that they once had, Connor Nani said. So while their spouses on H-1B visas could seek premium processing for their visa renewals, the H-4 holders could not. Cohen called the biometric requirements unnecessary given that it applies to all family members, including children, and therefore cannot be justified as a criminal background check, adding that it was also the reason behind the elimination of premium processing for H-4 applicants. Since the spouses of H-1B applicants now must fulfill the biometric requirement, which H-1B applicants are not subject to, USCIS cannot process their applications together. They're just, it, <laughs> it's like a bureaucratic nightmare. Franz Kafka could not have invented a bureaucratic process more convoluted than what we have right here, thanks to the Trump administration. Anyway, moving on. On October 1st, Trump signed into law a bill introduced by Representative Nita Lowy that expands the availability of 30-day premium processing to more work authorization applications, including H-4 EADs, for a $1,500 per filing fee. In response to an inquiry about when USCIS planned to act on the new law by implementing premium processing for H-4 EADs, an agency spokesperson said representatives are currently assessing technical, logistical, and legal requirements to expand premium processing to additional benefit types. Cohen characterized the new law as a cash cow for USCIS, adding that it does nothing to address the underlying issue of processing delays. With processing times at six to eight months, there will be no choice but to pay the premium, he said. In some places, this is called extortion. <laughs> yeah, 
The status of the women waiting for their work authorizations recalls those of women on H-4 visas who, from its 1990 introduction until the 2015 rule change, <clears throat> were unable to work at all upon arrival in the U.S. As a result, they were and are left dependent on their spouses, more vulnerable to domestic violence and immigration-based abuse, and subject to long days of boredom and feelings of isolation. Many leave behind careers in India and other home countries to find their lack of agency in the U.S. stifling, said Bott, the author of High Tech Housewives, who also co-wrote the SAAPRI report. You're moving to a country where you don't have a social network or familial support system, then on top of that you don't have a legal identity outside of your husband, she said. Uh, Shilpa Shadev, we heard from her earlier, emigrated from India to California where her husband was working as an engineering manager. The H-4 EAD renewal applicant who spoke to NBC News anonymously said she has identified indefinitely, I'm sorry, indefinitely, okay, <laughs> it's, sorry, confusing the way this is written. Anyway, she's abandoned her dream of starting a small food and events business that highlights the international cuisines of immigrants and refugees, who she also planned to employ as a result of the delays. You start planning your life and everything has to be put on hold, she said. My life is on hold. Her life was also on hold during the two and a half years it took her to get her first H-4 EAD, due in part to both filing delays from her husband's employer and the green card backlog. She finally received her work authorization in November 2019. In March, she received an offer to work as a part-time volunteer coordinator with Raksha, an Atlanta-based organization serving South Asian communities. An employee at the organization confirmed to NBC News, but the woman couldn't accept the job, she said, because her work authorization would only be valid for another two months before it would expire again when her husband's did. Because his H-1B visa would reach its three-year expiration date in May, so would her work authorization, even though she had only received it six months earlier. She has since joined a group lawsuit with other 4-H H4 EAD <laughs> applicants against USCIS in a federal district court. Federal court records confirm. Joining the lawsuit, she said, cost her $2,800. Okay. Um, <laughs> I can barely talk anymore, and uh, that was a really difficult article to read. Some confusing things about that. But anyway, it highlights, if nothing else, uh, the ways that Trump has... The Trump administration, it's not just Trump, I don't think he would even understand half of this stuff, but the ways his administration has tangled up all the processes so that we're not talking just let's keep out undocumented people from the country. We're talking let's take people that are here legally and make them miserable and make it hard for them to be here, make them want to leave. And that has been and will be one of the biggest legacies of Trump's uh, time in office is that just making the whole world feel like they're not welcome here in the U.S. And uh, we hope, hope, hope that we can turn that around. Anyway, have to go. Thank you for listening. Uh, we'll talk to you next time.